Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, stop whistling for a minute and tell me if you know where we're going. I know where we're going. I've stopped whistling. We're going toward stateroom 18 on A deck. Stateroom 18 on Mm -hmm. A deck. Makes it sound so simple. We've been walking through the halls of this ship. Not halls, darling. How many times do I have to tell you? Companion ways. Who's companion? Skip it. We've been walking through the companion way. See, that sounds silly. Of this ship looking for Julia and Hartley's stateroom for hours now. For five minutes. It seems like hours. David, are we lost? Of course not. Ah, here's a little sign. Cabins four to fourteen. Arrow points this way. But we want eighteen. Or isn't a stateroom a cabin? A stateroom is a cabin, darling. Everything aboard ship is all mixed up. They call passageways, halls, and cabin staterooms. <laughs> Why do they call them staterooms, anyway? Search me. On a train, it's a drawing room. On a ship, it's a stateroom. In a house, just a plain room. There's no, 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 no <laughs> method in it. Are you supposed to draw on a train and state on a ship, or whatever that is? It ought to be around here someplace. I suppose a stateroom is a lot fancier than a cabin. If that's what Julian Hartley have, it's a lot fancier. This ship has a funny smell, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not sure I'd like to go all the way to London in it. What makes it smell like this? Oh, the salt air and the linoleum and the paint. It's a very special smell. I like it. There's something... Romantic and exciting about it. Well, we've come to the end of this hall. Companion ways. I don't see any stateroom 18. Look on the other wall and see if there's a sign. Darling, it's a bulkhead. What's a bulkhead? The wall is a bulkhead. Now, David, stop insulting it. That wall hasn't done anything to you at all. <laughs> what? Bulkhead, isn't that the same thing as a dope? In nautical lingo, my beloved landlubber, a wall is correctly known as a bulkhead. Seems to me you have to learn a completely different language if you're going to travel on a ship. Let's go to the starboard, darling. I have a feeling stateroom 18's in that direction. Which way is starboard? To the right. That's exactly what I mean. And by the way, I didn't know you were a sailor. Oh, didn't you know? I am not really Davy Norton. I am Davy Jones. Uh-huh. At your service, madam. Well, here we are to starboard. I'm starting to think that Julia and Hartley aren't on this boat at all. Ship, darling. Come on. Let's uh, walk to port, darling. I thought we were in port. Isn't that where a ship is when it's standing still? Port is left. You mean we have left port? Mm-hmm. <laughs> David, will be halfway to London if we don't find somebody. You just follow me. You don't seem to be doing very well. It seems to me you're lost. You can't get lost on a ship. Why not? Because there's just so much room to get lost in. That makes sense. So if you walk long enough, you're bound to get back where you started from. Have we walked almost that long enough? It seems so to me. Drawing room, state room, blockhead, port, <laughs> starboard. I, I'd make a terrible sailor. How do you know? <laughs> I have no talent for languages. Imagine going all the way to London just for a wedding. Hartley and Julia are not going just for a wedding, darling. They're going to Lord Ravensdale's daughter's wedding. Aha. Very chic, Lord Ravensdale. Very dull, Lady Ravensdale. (laughs) This is still not finding their highness estate. Maybe it's downstairs. Below. Below what? On a ship, darling. Below means downstairs. All you're missing is a tattoo on your chest. (laughs) I had it removed the day before we got married. Oh, how nice. David, do you wish it was us going to London? We. You don't have to talk French. All you have to do is talk like a sailor. Do you wish it was us (laughs) going to London? Not especially. Me neither. All I want to go is to Connecticut. I think. You know, it's amazing how a big, heavy ship like this stays afloat. I can understand a cork or a match, but a big, heavy ship... Darling, I think I hear what we're trying to find. I do, too. I hear voices. Mm -hmm. Just when I was starting to think some big whale had eaten up all the people (laughs) we saw on the boardwalk. (laughs) The deck. Oh. Then the boardwalk is that little bridge we walked up to get on the deck. That's the gangplank. Well, that's the first logical name I've heard anything called aboard this ship. There certainly was a gang of people walking up that plank. Here. Here's stateroom 19. 18 must be on the other side of the hall. Companionway. Oh, here it is. 
Sounds as if there are a million people in there. Sounds like a party. Darling, you didn't think that Julia and Hartley would leave for London without a commotion, did you? <laughs> well, in we go. David and Claudia. Oh, how sweet of you to come. We wouldn't think of letting you go all the way to London without saying goodbye. Hello, Julia. Well, do come in, come in, if you can find an inch of space. The, the stateroom is as crowded as a Marx Brother movie. <laughs> Claudia, my dear, and David... Oh, let me get you a little something, We just huh? had breakfast. Oh, that doesn't matter. You've got to have a little champagne. Champagne? It's ten o'clock. Hartford hardly always feels that sailing's a celebration. <laughs> it is exciting. Exciting? It's a terrible nuisance. Oh, such a lot of fuss and commotion, packing and unpacking in these dreadful little rooms. David, you told me all the windows would be round. That's below decks, darling. Oh. I wish we didn't have to be going, but I promised Lord Ravensdale. I'm starting to think I'd love to go. It's getting in my blood. Are you a good sailor? I can't even talk like one. <laughs> Here you are, my dear. And for you, David. Oh, thank you. thank you. How long are you going to be in London, Hartley? Oh, just a few weeks, David. I hope not longer. I really prefer New York in April, but we may step over to Paris for ten days or so. Step over to Paris? Well, the continent is so convenient to England these days, it seems a shame not to take advantage of it. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Oh, oh, uh, excuse me a second, Lamb. I want to say hello to Mrs. Montague. I'll be right back. I suppose you'll be moving up to the farm while we're away. Two weeks from today, Hardy. Oh, my, oh, my. I must say I envy you. Why is it people always wish they were where they aren't? <laughs> Everybody except you. You know, I'm starting to feel a little like that myself. Oh, David, there's something so exciting about sailing. You'll have to take Claudia to Europe someday, David. Oh, I'm afraid I'd lose her to a third mate with a tattoo on his chest. <laughs> all ashore, all ashore. Uh, that sounds as if we're ready to shove off. David, maybe we better go above. <clears throat> above what, darling? Well, if below is below, isn't above above? Above is topside on a ship. All ashore! Listen to the gong! Mm, that means we've only got five minutes before sailing. Oh, uh, Hartley, my dear, Mrs. Montague wants to say goodbye to you and all that. Mm, goodbye, David. Goodbye, Claudia. And have a nice trip, Hartley. Goodbye, Hartley. And you have a nice farm, my dear. Well, darling, we'd better get ashore. All of a sudden, I, I hate to leave the ship. Mm, me too. All ashore. All ashore. We better get started or we'll get lost again. We won't find the gangplank till we're in the middle of the ocean. Then it's a sure thing we won't find it there. <laughs> All ashore. All ashore. a close call. Listen to all the whistles, David. They're practically an orchestra. Mm, the little short ones are the tugboats. And look, now they're pulling up the gangplank. The tugs are going to start pushing her down the river. Those little tugs? Mm -hmm. You think this big ship would be pushing them? <laughs> hey, I hear birds. Yeah, seagulls, darling. They follow the ship until she gets past the sight of land. I think Columbus must have been the bravest man. Imagine. Nothing but a sail. He didn't even know where he was going. David, you can smell the salt. Mm-hmm. Smells good, doesn't it? Mm. And uh, feel the wind. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Look, there she goes. She's moving. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, David. Why is it when I don't want to be going to London that I wish I were going? Yeah, I know. I guess it's the, the same feeling uh, when you hear a train whistle at night. If this gate weren't up and the gangplank folded away, I think I'd... Rush up on that deck and stand up on the toppest deck and, and let the wind blow on my face. Then, my darling, I'd better hold you in my arms. You better. David, someday we'll go on a ship trip, won't we? Boat trip. But you said, well, anyway, won't we? Not someday, darling. But now. Today. What do you mean? Come on. darling. All aboard on the Staten Island Ferry. Oh, this is a lovely ship, David. I like it much better than the Veritania. So much cozier. Mm, and we won't get lost in the companion ways of this one, darling. <laughs> we must have just lifted the anchor. <laughs> you don't lift anchor. You weigh it. Why? Who cares how heavy? Oh, what's the difference? 
Anyway, a ferry hasn't got an anchor. Good. Besides which, I'm sure this ship understands just plain land English. <laughs> and look, both ends of it are round. How does it know which direction it's going? Oh, it knows, it knows. It's gone back and forth to Staten Island so many times oh. that it knows. Hey, I tell you. Come on, darling. What? We'll stand up front. But don't you lean too far over the rail, you hear me? Yeah, I hear. Say, David, where is Staten Island, anyway? Right across the bay, mate, in the middle of New York Harbor. You mean it's been here all the time and I've never been there? Well, I'm certainly glad I'm seeing Staten Island before I'm seeing London. You know, it's the longest boat ride in the world for a nickel. Well, it just shows that the best things are to be found at home. Mm -hmm. David, look. Look, there's the Baratania coming out into the harbor. And still being pushed with the little tugs. Look at New York in the distance. It's all gray like a cardboard. You can feel the water rolling underneath us. Just like an ocean voyage. Yeah. It's all part of the magic of Baghdad. Did you say Baghdad? Baghdad on the subway. Aladdin with his magic nickel. Just think of it. The town where five cents buys an ocean voyage. A hundred mile railroad ride. Peanuts, popcorn, texture rice, cold Coca-Cola, a nickel, five cents, half a dime. Baghdad on the subway. The town of Aladdin and his magic nickel. Oh, darling. Some women look enviously at the hostess who manages to stay unruffled. She was just born that way, they say. She doesn't turn a hair no matter how many guests descend upon her. Maybe it's simply a matter of foresight that keeps her so calm, though. Maybe it's just that she knows there's always plenty of Coca-Cola in the refrigerator, so she doesn't need to fuss about refreshments. The home where there's always Coke on ice is apt to be a pretty easygoing place. A place that's popular with grown-ups and young people alike. Say, Joe... Joe, have you ever sailed on the Staten Island Ferry? Oh, David, it's a lovely boat trip, isn't it? Cutting through the harbor. Mm. It really takes you out of things. Somehow it always makes me feel that I've been away and I've come home refreshed. And for Aladdin's nickel. Same price as that refreshing bottle of Coke. It's quite a buy. On Monday, I'm probably going to wish I were far a sea on the Staten Island Ferry again. Why, David, what happens on Monday? Claudia insists on advertising for a maid in Monday morning's paper. Well, that sounds sensible. What's so terrible that you'd uh, expect? I don't know yet. But I've got a feeling that when my wife interviews a prospective maid, she'll find that uh, they aren't made in heaven. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, see you Monday then, David. Yep, have a nice weekend, Joe. All right, see you, David. As I was about to say... Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause, the pause that refreshes. Claudia has come to most of you now for the past six months. We'd welcome any suggestion or anything you may wish to say about our show. Write to Claudia, Post Office Box Number 173, Church Street Station, New York 8, New York. And I'll repeat that address. Claudia, Post Office Box 173, Church Street Station, New York 8, New York. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> 